We're making clothes, we're making jam, we're making do. How about you? Are you making do? We're, we're making bread and water soup and sparrow stew. How about you? Are you making do? I'm Claire Chapwell. One night I was lying in bed thinking, why doesn't somebody do a play about fat as a feminist issue which has changed my life? And I thought, I could write that play. So the next day, in Time Out Theatre Board, I wrote an ad saying, women interested in putting together a play based on fat as a feminist issue, write to Claire. And the rest is history. <laughs> I'm Katina Noble, and I was one of those people who picked up Time Out and in 1979 read that somebody was looking for people interested in doing a show based on fat is a feminist issue, which I had read and had changed my life. And I was also a, a performer, and this was the opportunity of a lifetime. So that's where it all began for me. My name's Harriet Powell. I joined Spare Tire when they'd actually, were coming to the end of the run of Bearing of the Weight, um, but I joined as their musician. I'd known Katina before um, we were in a community theatre company together, and they invited me in, and I never left for 17 years. In, in, visible, in, 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 visible, in. Sometimes I feel in, as though I'm in, not really there. Visible, in, Sometimes I feel in, people stare in, right through me. In, Sometimes I feel in, as though I'm not in, really there. Visible, in, Sometimes I feel in, that no one cares in, what I'm saying. Visible, what we're doing is we're looking at kind of the journey of spare tyre and it's kind of how it moved into in the good old days it was called community arts wasn't it? it certainly was. <laughs> and now it's called participatory arts and socially engaged arts. So um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Because actually um, before we got in front of the cameras you were saying actually you were always involved in kind of community arts and you are still involved in some kind of way in the community arts or in community sectors and work. Would you like to Would start there? I was in the women's theater group when I first came to England in 1973 and I was a feminist and it made a lot of sense. It was not the happiest of relationships. Just because we're all women and we're all feminists doesn't mean we're gonna like each other. <laughs> and we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we would be out there saying, women, yes, and backstage, nobody was talking to the, each other. Oh. It was not a nice place. So after four years, I thought, this is not good. And I also saw, I went to, to a show done by a company called Sidewalk, and I thought, this is the theater I want to be doing. So I wrote them a letter, because you could do that in those days, saying, I loved your work. I would really love to be in your company. And they wrote back and said, well, you can come along and talk to us, but the Arts Council might be stopping funding us. And they saw me and they said, well, you can join the company, but we don't know about how long our company is going to be going. I said, never mind, I'll join. So I did. Great. And sure enough, the Arts Council stopped funding them. Everyone left except me and left <laughs> me with the company and the charity number and a checkbook and 400 pounds in it. And I did one little, <laughs> I did one little fi under five show. And then, so when I started Spare Tire, I had 400 pounds. That's a lot of money in those days. Oh, mm. fortune, <laughs> fortune. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, yes. How many projects did you get out of 400 pounds? Um, it, it wasn't bad. I mean, we, we basically, in those days, we, but you know, we would have done it for free. Of course. Be honest. Be honest. Well, I mean, in dog troop, you were just paid it pittance when you were well, like seven pounds a week or something. Well, we were it? living and working cooperatively, so yeah, we weren't paying the rent. The company was, you know, housing us. Yes, yes. Yeah. We, that's how we both yeah. met. It wasn't yeah. that we were doing it for nothing. I think we were. We were professional, but we just that was the way we organised the work. We were yeah, we lived and in working. The, we, it was interaction, and we lived in in Kentish Town in houses around in the community and we did all these different projects and Harriet and I were involved in the children's theatre company Professor Dog's Troop. Uh, that's really interesting so so like um, 
it was participatory theatre. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And so it wasn't just that the company was cooperative. Mm. You're kind of almost suggesting that your lives yes. were oh, yeah. cooperative. Yeah. 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 I'd yeah. love to hear a little bit mm. more about that. So you were in one house? We were in a factory. No, we were in a factory. We, short we life, worked short, life, short life housing. We were able to get yeah. from Camden Council um, quite a lot of... Uh, when I first joined, um, I was actually... I think my title was house mother. I was in charge of housing, <laughs> you know, get, finding the old mattresses for people to sleep on. Sounds disgusting. Now, you wouldn't do it now. You wouldn't do it. But, we did, and we lived very, very happy like that in about, I suppose, 10 different houses. And you cooked, yes. didn't you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we cooked. Every, we had a cooking rotor, which I was responsible for. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> what happened was we would do, we would be rehearsing or doing kind of work some yeah. of the time. Then once a month or once every whatever time, we'd be, yeah. we'd be cooking with somebody and for, for 30, but in the summer for like 60, 70 people. Another day we'd be on the phones. Yeah. Because we did summer programs, and we earned nine other pounds a week, workers. but we got all everything provided yeah. for us. I think at the time, Ed Berman, who started Interaction, he was just so fired up with, you know, well for me, ideas around, mm. you know, socialism and feminism, and mm. I was listening. I was meeting feminists, and mm. it was all so exciting. And it was, of course, you know, important that we didn't, you know, we were thinking of alternatives to, you know bourgeois theatre and the elite who go to the national and that actually there were possibilities yeah. of reaching different kinds of audiences with different messages involving Invo and them. involving them yeah. Be yes. being yeah. participatory was hugely important yeah. so when we were researching uh fattest feminist issue plague bearing the weight yeah. we um our aim was to destroy weight watchers that was the plan so, as you can see, we were very successful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we just thought every woman needs to know about this. You know, most women feel very crazy about their shape. And they feel very, very oppressed by, by um, the way society's been treating them. We said to people, if you'd like to sign up to join a compulsive eating group, um, please do. Because we'll come and run it for you. We'll come and start it for you. Because alongside um, this, actually, I joined the Women's Therapy Centre which Susie Orbach started where, where, and, and took over from her running and setting up compulsive eating groups. So there was a kind of link between Spare Tire and the Women's Therapy Centre loosely. And so, yeah, out of, out of the mm. performances, actually, that, you know, came some of these groups. Another day in hot pants by July I'll start my fast tomorrow, but today I'll bake a pie. I'm going to be a stone by my birthday in hot pants by July. I'll start my fast tomorrow, but today I'll bake a pie. Or something. Oh, brilliant! I'm sure we didn't do those parts. I love that. I love that. Spontaneity. So, how important was humour and comedy in what you Entirely. did? Was it was it consciously? Massive. Yes, because we thought this this is painful stuff. They've, they've got to go away laughing. They have. The comedy is full of pain, isn't it? I mean, if, you yeah. know, it's, it's it's. But it, it was just a wonderful mm. way to kind yeah. of actually present very serious issues. Are you able to kind of like just um, describe a little bit of that creative process? We um, did improvisations yeah. and we made a story and we thought, okay, well, let's cover lots of things. So mm -hmm. we had a daughter who had anorexia. Mm -hmm. We had a slimmer of the year mm -hmm. um, who started putting it all back. All the shows, we, we worked in this kind of way. We, we do, I mean, so you know, based on devising, but you scripting. And mm. Harry our, our doing personal the, experience. a lot of the yeah. music, mm. Claire mm. doing the music as well, but actually devising and, and improvising through games. Mm. So yes. what I'm interested in is that I, I, I guess it was the first decade or so that was all about personal experience. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then how did you make that shift to kind of working with other people and other people's stories? Somebody, and asked, somebody asked us. The cockpit, mm. uh, the cockpit got in touch and said, we have a group of young women, or we'd like you to come and work with young women. How do you feel about that? We went, okay. Mm. 
So that was, you know, it's again, giving, giving other women yeah. a, a platform yeah. for their yeah. particular issues yeah. with, around whatever it was, contraception and yes. Yes. Um, other things. Things they, you don't they would talk about. Yeah. Three years later, yeah. that was fist and finger. Now that was, that was probably the most that had the long last, most long lasting repercussions. And that the interesting thing about that project was that it was all about you know sex, sexism with a lot of very kind of na naive, lovely, but very you know uh, naive young white working class me men. And it was kind of revelation to them to be working on this theme with a choreographer who was gay and very open and had lots of discussions with them about sexual politics. So that was all going on alongside mm -hmm. us getting the show together. But the it, topic yeah. was sexism in schools. Yeah. 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 So there were some very funny things, like there was a, there was a woman in, in a men's Wudekin class and there was a man, uh, there was a boy in a girl's typing class. So those were funny. But the, the women's song proved so contentious, the, the men couldn't take it. They were absolutely, there was one man in particular who threatened to walk out and then the other men kind of thought, yes, we're not taking this. I and mean, how I, did that resolve itself then? Well, I remember saying, I'll just rewrite the whole show with all women in it thinking, what? <laughs> <laughs> how am I going to do that then? That'll be interesting. Nick Nutchins, okay. he was a choreographer with us and he was brilliant and he had mm. had some training in sort of conflict resolution or yep. something. Yep, yep. And he, and I can remember him being terribly nervous, but you know, we all got behind him and said, yes, we, we must do this. And we were in a circle and he just set the conversation going and allowed the men to speak and say how they felt. You know, it really, I mean, it really changed I, well, those men's lives. Mm. It, I mean, yeah. and the, all of yeah. our lives, and actually. But no, no, many, many people took it as a place to, you know, they explore their sexuality. Many people came out in that show. Many people just found ways of... Some of them went on to be in Black Mime, which was a brilliant theatre company. Mm. And, and then Roy, Roy Williams, who, who wrote his first play based on a scene in Fists and Fingernails. Were you ready for conflict resolution in the way that you designed the future project? We, we were always having difficulties, I think. Mm. I, my memory is, you know, there mm. were, and, but I think, you know, between us we had the skills mm. to, to know how to um, keep things safe, you know, make mm. things um, resolve. Issues. We I suppose never, yeah. nothing, we nothing is that extreme ever happened again. No, but the I whole group we, didn't implode. Yeah, and so we knew. So we would talk one to one. Yeah, with people. we had the confidence. Mm. I think mm. after that, mm. probably. How did funding affect you? We weren't always chasing. People would come to us as well for yeah. projects, yeah. which is how we we started did, the older yeah, people's yeah. work. You know, somebody came with with mm. they had funding. They had money to, for a project to work with older people, and in a care home and. We did. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and then we tour, wouldn't we? And then, you know, West we Midlands would fund We got a lot of money from touring. <coughs> Jean, a Jean was the tour person, and she just, I mean, her brought along. I couldn't believe the places we went. We had, we toured and toured and toured and toured. But Teen, Teen would kind of say, Teen would say, we're going on holiday. I mean, we're going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> It was like a, it's such it was a good time. daytime. How we didn't did you have make a show? money from touring? Oh, we had such you... a good time. Oh, it was... we'd, should we, we'd stay with teens' friends, or we'd stay with Harriet's or, or, sisters. Or we'd stay with people who'd been that's in audiences okay. before and said, yeah. when you're here next, yeah. stay with and us. Well, well, that's unheard of nowadays, oh, isn't we'd, it? We'd lovely, around, so we'd stroll around, we'd go to the markets, and we just we just had a blast. We had such a Look at that. Look at that. Look at those places we go. My favorite show was our last show, the three of us together, Gone Shopping. It was very, it was the most big P political. It was about money. Mm. I've forgotten gone shopping. I've yeah. gone shopping. And it was, um, it was just, we were talking about it last night, it was about consumerism. Mm -hmm. And it had the most men in the audience of anyone we ever had, strangely. Mm. But it was, uh, it was very, very powerful. I played an evil credit card before credit cards were almost <laughs> hardly around, yes, you know. I mean, yes. that's it, like, and I was the beginning of it. And the, credit, oh, yeah. come and get it. I, yeah, come yeah, and get it, come I and get it. But no, we, credit, you know. Free credit, come and get it. No, you were, you were Dolly. <laughs> I no, know. 
No, but we... The, we the, the, I had many parts, no, darling. We were very them. versatile. We would go... She I played a great girl, but you know, I, in those days, I, I mean, of course, song, you know, it was, oh, that's right. it, was, it, was the bad it was before everybody was living on credit, and it was just the beginning of all that. Walking down the high street in 1963, I see my friend Penny, but she doesn't see me, so I say, hey there, Penny, you're looking gay, in your mini skirt and kinky boots, light your hair that way, she says, thanks, Penny, you've made my day, hey, let's get down to Little Woods, what do you say? Let's, let's do, do the shopping, hop, hop to the shop and do the shopping. The hop. low point, the difficult bits. Yes. I, mean, I think those, just yeah. things like playing a keyboard that had batteries and the batteries running about halfway <laughs> through the show. I'm mean, having to get my pin of screwdriver out and change the battery <laughs> during the show. Oh, lovely. I've forgotten that. And I've forgotten another that. time, I'd forgotten something and I had to go, or I had to go and buy batteries. Birmingham, I got lost. Oh God, I know. <laughs> you know that was the worst. And Don't spaghetti hysterical, junction. hysterical. Like, oh my God, we're right. starting in five minutes. You know, those yes, kind of yes. Yeah. Sheffield, really, <laughs> really difficult young people, youth, yes. and they were just not interested, not listening, yes. and it was like cut, to the, cut to the last <laughs> song. <laughs> you know, I mean, there were moments like that, or a toddler group where the scenery was literally the one of the little. Three year old or two year olds have gone round the back, pushed it down, and the scene was collapsing on us. There were those lovely moments. If you are 50 to 50, a female member of the race, you might live in Lands End or London, but you'll be in the very same place now. We, we might find you in Unemployment an Avenue. Can't get a job, what can I do? Got no money and I got the blues. Can't get a job, what can I do? Got no money and I got the blues. If you are 15 to 50, a female member of the race, you might live in Lands End or London, but you'll be in the very same place. Now here's another episode.